Well, we have made it to day 24 of our 40-day Elijah fast. 24, you know what that means? We just got two weeks and two days. <laughs> but I'm not looking forward to it for wrapped up because I'm instead looking forward to God to continue to speak to me and reveal things to me too in my time with him and in my time in the word and uh, as we follow Elijah's progression here in his story. And we're in 2 Kings 19 verses 15 to 18 today. And if you remember yesterday, God had asked Elijah twice the question, Elijah, why are you here? Well, Elijah didn't have a really good answer. So God says, I'm going to tell you why, Elijah. You're going to turn around and you're going to walk back the way you just came. And uh, give you an idea, that was 260 miles that Elijah had walked over 40 days, a little over six and a half miles a day. That's a kind of slow pace, but I think God was speaking to him along the way as well. But now he said, you're going to walk back 260 miles, but I've got a purpose for you. Here's the things that you're going to do. He said, one, he said, you're going to anoint a new king over Syria. He says, two, and this was what Elijah really wanted to hear. He said, you're going to anoint a new king, Jehu, over Ahab and Jezebel. Not only will he be replaced as king, but we'll wipe out his entire dynasty. There will be no more in the lineage of Ahab and Jezebel going forward. That's all good things. And he tells him something else. You know what, Elijah? It's time to retire. You're going to anoint your replacement. Now, look, this isn't a saying right now, but he said, you're going to build your legacy. You're going to find your replacement. And told him who it was. He said, it's going to be Elisha. You're going to find him. You're going to begin to train him to replace you as prophet. It's important that we all should begin at one point in time to begin to think about our legacy and what we're going to do and bring people alongside to help us now and to one day replace us. You know, I'm lucky that in my two churches I pastor that I've got people in the churches that can... Um, fill in for me in the pulpit is needed or if they need to, or if somebody needs to be visited or prayed for that they're there we're lucky that we have that we're not meant to do this alone and to end up this section today um, again first kings 19 15 through 18 god gives a gift to <laughs> to elijah if you will uh, uh, it's an observation a pulling back of the clouds <laughs> he shows him something he said look elijah i got seven thousand others in israel that have not bent their knee to Baal. Elijah, you're not alone. You know, that's my message for tomorrow in the church services. We are not alone. We were never meant to do this alone. God has raised up such a great cloud of witnesses, we are told. We're not meant to do this alone. If you're going through something, struggling with something, you're not meant to do it alone. You have God there, but you also have not only God and the Holy Spirit with you, but he's given you brothers and sisters in Christ. If you choose to reject to be in the fellowship with others for whatever reason, maybe you're, I don't know, maybe it's pride or maybe you're embarrassed or whatever it may be, but remember that you have chosen that. Uh, maybe they sound a little bit blunt, but you have chosen that. God has given you people around you who love you and care for you. That is why God has said, forsake not the fellowship. He has given us the local church to us as a gift. The church isn't there to be able to give um, to, to, to give to God. The church is there to give to us to one another. Now look, we do things in the church to the glory of God. Everything we do is done to the glory of God. That's the chief end of man, is to be able to worship God and enjoy Him. But we're made to do that with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. He is God, our Heavenly Father. And like me, He enjoys seeing His kids do things together and help them out. That's why God gave us the church. You are not alone. That's the message for tomorrow. You are not alone. You are never meant to do this on your own. Find a church tomorrow. Find a local church, a local body of believers, a local Bible-believing church, a church that believes every bit of the Bible from one end to the other. And go there and open yourself up to the love that others want to show you. Fellowship with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't be like Elijah hiding out in a cave thinking, Oh, woe is me. I'm the only one here. No! God has given you such a great cloud of witnesses. Look, if you need somebody to talk to before church, Hunter Moore, find me. You can find, I'm not hard to find at all, apparently. 
find me, and I would love to have the opportunity to visit with you and to speak with you. But I really want to see you at church tomorrow surrounded by other believers. Let me pray for you. Father God, let us realize that we were never meant to do this alone. Father, you've told us to take your burden, for your burden is light and your yoke is easy. But Father, you've also given us so many others around us to help and lift us up, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and let us not forsake that fellowship, that coming together, that time to be able to visit with them. Lord God, whoever needs that, and I know everyone that knows the sound of my voice needs it, but Father God, especially lay upon them now to find a church tomorrow to hang out with people of like mind and like faith who believe in the only true God. Father, this is my prayer for all. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, I'll be looking for you tomorrow. You know God loves you. you got to know by now that I love you. Get out there and, one, let someone else know you love them. But you know what? Get out there and let others love on you. Don't hold that back from us, all right? Look, I'll see you tomorrow in church. I'll be looking.